This is going to be a video on using SureTrack scheduling software for construction projects. The first thing you're going to want to do is get into your plans. Start flipping through them and keeping mental notes of different components of the construction, how long things will take, and the sequence of how the construction will flow. Now when you open SureTrack, the first thing you're going to do when you come up to this uh, welcome screen is click on start a new project with SureTrack and just name the project name for this example we'll, we'll just call it example schedule that's all you really need to fill out for now you can get into more advanced options later and you can come back and fill this out later hit OK and you've got a blank screen ready to fill out now you have start dumping everything that you can think of that's a task in the construction project after you've reviewed your plans and specs and um, so I'm just going to start picking a few tasks and typing them up. Uh, notice to proceed. Um, pour concrete slab. Final cleaning. As you can see here, I'm just throwing every little thing that I can think of up here. It's not in sequence. It's not logical yet. I can come back and add all that stuff in later. And as you can see, I've listed uh, pretty much everything that I could think of here uh, all filled out. But the problem is, I don't have any of this information organized. It's just kind of my brainstorming, my, uh, my dumping of everything I could think of. Um, before I can start managing the schedule, applying logic to it in sequence, I've got to organize it into bite-sized chunks. And I do that by assigning each task a phase. So I'm going to break all of this uh, this big construction project into different phases. Typically, uh, you break it into pre-construction, site work, the building, and then finally close out. So we'll walk through how we go through that. First, I've got to define my phases. So I'm going to go to Define activity codes, click on phase for the codes, and I've got to start defining everything here. So, like I said, the four phases I'm going to have are pre-construction, and I'll type in a, a three-letter or three-character, um, just a, a memory thing right here so I can I know what I'm talking about, and under the description, I'll type in pre-construction. Next is going to be site work then the actual building and finally close out now we've got to keep these in the that order otherwise SureTrack will order them by alphabetic order so pre-construction is going to be first site work second, the actual building third, and close out fourth. Hit close and I've defined what my phases are going to be. Now I've got to get ready to break all these tasks into the different phases. So I'm going to go up to Format, Organize, and I want to group everything by phase. So I click on that first one and drop it down to phase. Uh, before I leave this box, automatically within that phase it's going to sort by activity date but more important than activity date I want to sort by early start date. Let's come down here click on early start hit OK. Finally I want to start uh, I want to show make sure that all the columns up here show what I want them to show. To do that I'm going to go to columns and I've got my activity ID, description, original duration, early start, early finish, phase, and responsibility. Um, yours may not show that, so if it doesn't, just put it in that order, but make sure phase is shown in the column here. So whatever you type in here is going to show up here. Now I'm ready to start going through and assigning each task and placing it into a phase. Um, so for example, this uh, top task here, I got substantial completion. Of course, that's going to happen in the final phase. So what I want to do is I want to double click on that task and box it open at the bottom. Click on this more button, and you'll see I got a place to put in phase. Just click on the phase right here, and you get a drop down menu. And go back up to uh, substantial completion. So for substantial completion, I'm going to come down here, 
and click on that's going to be a, in the phase closeout. Just click on that. Next one I'll go to is permanent power. Uh, when I click on that one, permanent power is going to occur during the actual building phase. Final completion, that's something that's going to happen during closeout. Notice to proceed, that's something that's going to happen during pre-construction. The roof, it's going to be activity that happens during the building. As you can see, as I start assigning these tasks into phases, they'll start being broken off into the appropriate phase up above. So things that I clicked on for pre-construction went there, things I went into building went there, and things I went clicked on for closeout went here. Now that I have all these tasks broken into phases, I can more easily wrap my mind around uh, sequencing and organizing. How I go about start sequencing activities and, and applying logic to them and showing what activity comes after which, uh, I just click on an activity, right click on it, go down to activity detail, click on predecessors, and you see I got a window open over here. Right click on that same activity again, go to activity detail once again, and click this time click on successors. So now I've got two windows that show the activity 1000, notice to proceed, shows its what its predecessor is going to be and what its successor is going to be. Notice to proceed isn't going to have any predecessor, it's the first activity, but it is going to have a su successor. Successor is going to be uh, receipt of permit. So I can either click on that first box and go to click on receipt of permit or I could have just typed in 1030 into that cell here and I got that from uh, the activity ID here. You repeat these steps for every activity on this list and every activity should have a predecessor and successor except for the first activity should not have a predecessor and the last activity should not have a successor. Um, so I'll just pick some at example. Let's let's come on down to the building here. We'll just go on to, down to site work here and uh, pick an example. So we've got a line blue top and final grade. Um, the predecessor of this activity is probably going to be uh, site clearing and rough grade and as you can see it's uh, that's activity 1060 so I'm going to go up here click on the first box and just type in 1060 uh, successor for line blue top and final grade might be site utilities and that's activity 1380 so just type in a 1380 here and as you can see it started moving things around so those two activities were up here but Line blue top got bumped down to here, and site utilities got bumped down to here. So this is one of the tougher, more painstaking parts. You got to click on every task and identify a predecessor and successor for it. Just go through. It's okay if you make a mistake. You can always go back and and change predecessors and successors. All right, now that I've assigned a predecessor and successor for each task, I'm starting to get something that looks a little bit like a schedule here. The last step is going to be to assign durations to each of these tasks. So this is where you would go through and um, just look at the task and take an estimate about how, long, about how long it'll take. So erosion control for this project, I'm estimating it's going to take three days. Site clearing and rough rub, five days. Uh, site utilities, maybe four days. Lime and blue top, uh, probably about four days also. And as you can see, as I fill out the days, these bars on the right start getting filled out. So the longer the days, the longer the bars. And just go through this for every task, and uh, then you'll, your schedule will really start taking form. Okay, and now we finally got something that really looks like a schedule. Uh, every th bar that's in red is on the critical path, and SureTrack does that automatically. Green bars are activities that are not on the critical path. Just do a little formatting around and uh, you've got a pretty good estimate of how long this project will take. So for example, this one is going to start on 1 May of 09. Go down to the bottom, the last task, and we should be hitting final completion around 21 July. Hopefully you got something out of this video. For more videos on construction practices, visit us at leadforcontractors.com.